This NFL most rushing and receiving yards edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Edge Boost. Edge Boost enables you to double your bet with no interest. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash edge to get started today. Hey, this is Pac-Man Jones. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Yes, sir. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. That was good. Maximum effort o- during OTA, showing the coaches you mean business, trying to make the team. You're not dogging it. I accidentally had my sound on. No, no. Dog. Got the dog sound effect going there. You at? Oh, I see what you're doing. There. Yeah, we got an awesome uh, show. We we got an awesome show. I mean, again, we're talking National Football League, most passing yards future, most receiving yards future, maybe even a bonus future mm, here. Well, Jesus. And, and and what a time to talk about the National Football League. I mean, just the the football juice is right. It's all already June. I'm juice, baby. I'm juice. And uh, we got to get to the news because there is there is a bunch to it. Is there? Yeah. Uh, first up, we have this edition of SGPN presents Real Men of DGEN. Real Men of DGEN. We salute you, Isaiah Rogers. That's right, cornerback for the Indianapolis Colts. Not sure uh, how much longer he'll be a cornerback for the Indianapolis Colts because Rogers placed hundreds of bets. Primarily in the twenty-five to fifty dollar range, according to multiple reports. Although he did have uh, one parlay in the small four-digit range. Mm. Disciplinary action may include, without limitation, severe penalties up to and including a fine, termination of employment, and/or banishment. What from the NFL for life? So again, so that is, is how awesome this- gambling is. Isaiah Rogers willing to put it all on the line. Just for a little action. Well, he probably didn't know it was all in the line. <laughs> I think it's probably uh, safe to say didn't know uh, it was all in the line. Fun fact: he was the. I didn't know. I couldn't do that. I didn't know. What a great joke! Shout out to Dave Chappelle. Fun fact: he was the second Isaiah taken in the sixth round of the twenty twenty really? NFL draft. Shout out, Oregon State Beaver Isaiah. Mm-hmm. Hodgins, Buffalo Bills, of course, took him. Also, fun fact about that sixth round, Sean, you'll like this. John Runyon's kid got drafted in that same sixth oh, round. Oh, nice. Easy in the YouTube chat saying, uh, bring him on the show would make a great interview. Yeah, I mean, if he's banned for life, uh, certainly I, I, I we disagree. Could, we could talk about him having a podcast. I don't think it's a good interview. Why? Because I think this is a classic case of just straight up idiocracy. No, I think, yeah, I think if. If we get through, do we have the details? By the way, first off, he would have to be banned from the NFL completely. Then he would have to come to terms with it. Yeah. Then he would have to do the Pete Rose thing, where he starts oh. leaning into gambling. And if he can come on and sh- let his true DJ colors fly, also, I mean, he makes me feel like a a real degenerate because he's he's making money in the NFL yeah. and he's betting twenty five fifty dollars a game. I first thought is kind of a pussy. Well, that was my. Come on, man, sack up. That's why you know he <laughs> did had no idea. I mean, just similar to Calvin Ridley, it's just like hijack in your pleasure centers. You're not like it's like I I do think you have to be stern with these things, obviously, but it's like you know these guys. You know, he's a six round pick, so he's not making a ton of money. But let's assume he's making about a million dollars a year. A twenty five dollar bet, like you're. He doesn't have a problem. He's not getting any burn off of that. No, like he's just he's throwing in some bets. Like all right, like let's maybe we can adjust this at some point in the future. Obviously, you don't want to bet on your team. Do we, we don't know if he was betting on or against. We do him. know he was. Betting he was on. betting on the Colts. 
Uh, he was he's scheduled to make two point seven four three oh, million man. in base salary this season. Coming last year, he made eight hundred ninety five thousand yeah. dollars. Well, fucked up last year of his rookie deal, and he was going to be a starter. It, it it really you feel bad for the guy to it, to some point. The the making bets like Jamison Williams and those guys by all accounts, a lot of it was them betting NBA at the team yeah. facility. All right. They're NFL players. They're not the you know brightest bulbs in the, uh, in the world. So, okay, fine. But you should know you shouldn't be betting on your team, especially with the Calvin Ridley thing happening. Like if how does an, that if, not wake you up? If at you're all? an NFL team and you're not educating your players, as to the basic ass rules here, like th- this is no different than putting that sign in the bathroom that says <laughs> "wash your fucking hands." But like you're at a restaurant, it's like employees, please, please wash your hands. Really? It's like really? not not oh, brandishing. Oh no, not not. You're not supposed to bring the not on. brandishing oh, a fire. Oh, I, I accidentally got isoed on you here. Oh man, oh. this will be funny if the uh, well and and uh, YouTube's I don't know if you gonna saw, take us down, Ryan. I don't know if you saw Wait. and I can I, I hold the gun? Yeah, uh, I no, I'm, not, I'm not allowed to hold the gun. All right, I, I'll I'll keep my hands off the gun. We'll keep. You don't want your prints on this thing, Ryan. The the uh, the NFL and John Moran is it is fun to have a gun on a live stream. Um, John Moran, you can do cool tricks with it. We um, we did check the box that we. Are not a uh, podcast for kids. J- uh, I'm assuming that's not. John ja Morant claims. Uh, oh, <laughs> claim. Let me, let me John ja Morant claims that the uh, gun he was using in the video was a fake gun. Oh, so. that's genius. That's genius. How can they prove it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, who knows? There's a, and I don't even know if I should be saying this rumor, but a, well, I, I'll, rumor? I'll say it. I'm not reporting this. Okay. The, I read things on the internet. Don't play the breaking sa- news no, sound. Not effect. news at all. Yeah. But there were some rumblings on social media that part of what they uncovered was that uh, there was a um, there was like a supposedly a murder and uh, the car he was in was being investigated. Again, very, very like that's how source they caught of a Isaiah source Rogers? of a source. No, this is oh, John Moran. Okay. So that they're because the the commissioner alluded to like other stuff they found. It sounds like it's well, much who knows worse if stuff. any of that. Well, but then no, he, he said basically like I'm gonna uh, paraphrase here, but we found like open and shut case stuff, <laughs> which means very guilty. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Back to Rogers though. Do all right. So I I I correctly predicted the first situation in terms of both what happened why they got in trouble and that that was just the tip of the iceberg because the NFL knows how to dominate the media. Yeah. They're just going to release they're going to release one guy a day sports, up until kickoff. Sports handle has some guy working for him who all of a sudden he's breaking fucking news, mm. which by the way, he got scooped because he didn't have the actual details. <laughs> uh, still I, still good news. I'd break. imagine that yeah, there's there's obviously more to come, right? Yeah. How do you not have a seminar? Well, now uh, Ron Rivera supposedly set out a PowerPoint about yeah. gambling and the consequences. So we'll see where this all shakes out. But hey, we are here to talk NFL futures. Don't you just put craps table in the office, right? Like get like get ahead of it. <laughs> get ahead of it. I like that. Hey, you guys want to? You want that rush of gambling? Well, let's get a craps table in the office. And then there'll be that story of, uh, you know, like when they get rid of the ping pong table, when they get serious, the Washington commanders have gotten rid of their craps table. Hey, if you're looking for a little extra action, what better way than by going to edge boost? That's right. Edge boost allows you to double your bet with 0% interest. Like Isaiah Rogers, he bet $50. He could have bet a hundred dollars because um, edge boost would match his $50. And he would just have to pay it back over four equal Weekly installments, twelve fifty per week, zero interest, zero. That's crazy. That again, there's so many times where maybe it's a hedge, maybe it's a future. Let's say you have five hundred dollars set away for futures, but you want to get down on the thousand dollars in bets. Edge Boost is there to help support SGPN and grow your bankroll by going to sportsgamingpodcast.com/edge to sign up. Sportsgamingpodcast.com/edge. And a reminder, it can be part of a responsible gambling plan. You can actually manage all your limits from the Edge Boost dashboard. And again, it's the first ever bet now, pay later Visa card. Must be 21 years or older. Use problem gambling. Call 1 800 Gambler. I do, I, I enjoy the training wheel option they, they provide. 
Some of us mm. are men who ride our motorcycles like Carl Malone without a helmet. <laughs> All right. What do you want to talk first? Passing or rushing? Rushing the field is a little shorter, so maybe it's a quicker conversation. All right. All right. So uh, typically we go bottom to the top, and and look at here, first guy on the list, Sean, Mister Daniel Jones, one hundred eighty to one. Wow. Any sprinkle worth worth a mention here? Do you? I know typically you have uh, all sorts of insightful information. I do. Uh, obviously, as you would imagine, a lot of this is tied to carries. You have to get mm. the carry volume. That pretty much eliminates all quarterbacks. A quarterback is never one. Uh, pass winners, you're looking at Josh Jacobs, uh, Jonathan Taylor, Derrick Henry, back to back years, Zeke Elliott, Kareem Hunt, Zeke Elliott, Adrian Peterson going back there to 2015. What do they all have in common? They all had over 300 carries. Yeah. Jacobs 340, Taylor 332, Henry 378, and then Henry 303, Zeke 304. Uh, rookies have won this. Uh, Zeke won in 2016. Kareem Hunt actually won as a rookie in 2017. And he's a fun fact. He's the only running back to have been the the leader of rushing yards in a season. By the way, only 1327. Yes. Only well, guy yeah. to ever only got to do it in the past uh, like 3 decades with less than 300 carries. Yeah, he was he was uh he was right on the edge there. It was I think it was 272. High but still, like most of these guys are well north of 300. <laughs> Uh, serial check it in again. Cowboys fan pointing out Zeke Elliott has been a free agent for 84 days. Wow. We'll have to put stuff on the calendar we, like this. So we remember, we know we just passed the, uh, the 10,000 day mark of the Cowboys. Last time the Cowboys <laughs> were in the conference championship. I, it's been 84 days since uh, Zeke Elliott's been in the national do we, football. League. Do we do a milk carton Photoshop? Is that the <laughs> Maybe uh, him I and Kenny love, Galladay. I always love missing uh, for 84 days. Dumping on Zeke. Not it's, considered dead yet, though. Let's uh, let's not put him in the in the ground yet. So basically, the takeaway is also uh, I would say kind of a young man's game relatively. Henry won it in year four and five. Um, almost won it last year, even though he missed some games. Jacobs won it in his fourth year. So I think guys who've been in the league, I would say more than like six years. For a running back, I'm I'm not I'm taking off my list. Non strike shortened seasons. Okay. Since nineteen seventy two. Guys who have led the league in rushing yards under three hundred carries, OJ Simpson, Barry Sanders, Kareem Hunt, and a guy named Otis Armstrong. Um <laughs> I not many people. So you gotta get the volume. Buddy of uh buddy of mine in the industry ran into oh. uh OJ Simpson oh. at an airport. They were both uh flying to Las Vegas. Oh, OJ. that's when you didn't know who OJ was. <laughs> I yeah, I, best he, group text ever. He sent me the photo. I'm like, this is OJ. I, I thought it was OJ, but he looked really weird. He was wearing a hat. He has those super white teeth. And uh, kind of looked like Inspector Gadget. <laughs> like if he was playing Inspector <laughs> he looked, Gadget, he looked. He did not look like a, a normal OJ. <laughs> he was flying Spirit Airlines. So if you want to uh, know uh, what uh, OJ is up to, flying Spirit Airlines. Once you get into gambling content, <laughs> OJ, a whole other when story. OJ's paying, he ain't paying. If you know what I mean. I I get I get what you mean, Ryan. All right. Uh, for some reason, so Ed, we got uh, Dan Jones, 180 to one. Cro you're saying cross him off because he's a quarterback. Yeah. Antonio Gibson, 170 to one. He seemed like a strange addition here. Uh, on top of the fact that Brian Robinson, to me, is the guy who coming in not getting shot is certainly an interesting option. Uh, you know, now we're starting to hear that. Well, the new coaching staff was really high on Chris Rodriguez Jr. Really, uh, the enemy really raving about him in camp. So. Uh, I said all of that just so you could put a mental note on that for your best ball drafts, Chris Rodriguez Jr. But yeah, I'm passing on Antonio Gibson. Yeah, I mean, how does he get to 300 carries? He doesn't. I think he's third on his team. James Cook, or at least second on his team. James Cook, 100 to one with Josh Allen. So the two Bills, 100 to one. Obviously, James Cook is interesting. Uh, yeah. He's got the pedigree of Dalvin Cook, who, by the way, uh, he's never he's never uh, led the league in, in rushing. Although he he I feel like he came close a couple of years. I just don't think this offense will ever support a leading rusher. Right? Yeah, that's fair, but again, he No, no chance. I'm out. I mean, they signed Damian Harris for a reason. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I, I'm just saying is getting to a hundred to one crazy for James Cook? Yes. Uh, 
they want to run the ball a little bit more. What if Josh Allen gets injured? There's there's some scenarios where James Cook could I get mean, to I would hundred or three hundred carries. That's I at would, least feasible to me. Uh see, I think the problem is the Bills as a team probably didn't rush for like if you remove Josh Allen from their team, so Singletary eight nineteen, James Cook five oh seven, Zach Moss ninety one, um, Isaiah McKenzie fifty five, and of course Josh Allen seven six. They rush for twenty two hundred as a team, and Josh Allen isn't like so. I, Josh Allen gets his five hundred to seven hundred yards. That's just not enough yards. Okay, so just hear me out. Okay. Devin Singletary uh, carried it one hundred seventy seven times, ran for eight hundred nineteen yards. What if? James Cook just gets just gets that on top of what he got last year. Yeah, so 15, he, gets eight, he would he would need like fifteen hundred yards. So he's eight nineteen plus five oh seven. That's only thirteen hundred. Yeah, right, Ryan. It's it's a hundred to one. I'm gonna take a little sprinkle zero, at a hundred to one. Zero interest in this one. <laughs> you stop trying to appease the Bills fans. I love They're how you're just so. Spiral. I love how you're so angry about a hundred to one. It's I'm not angry. One. I just think it's a horrible take. DeAndre it's not a horrible take. DeAndre Swift. Jameer Gibbs, AJ Dillon, all sixty-five to one. Um, None of these. Oh, so Gibbs and Swift to me, scratch them off. I don't think they're going to see the volume. AJ yeah. Dillon, look, we're months away from the season. Aaron Jones, granted, he does, he has not gotten hurt a ton in his career, but if he gets hurt between now and then, this is going to be a run-first team. To me, and, and he's a big dude who could definitely take the carries. We don't know what the quarterback's going to be any good. So yeah. obviously that could hurt it, but LaFleur's always wanted to be a run first team. AJ Dillon was a guy he went out of his way to draft in the second round. Obviously we need an injury here, but th like this to m this is I'm I'm peeking at this, but I'm going to say I'm passing because of the va the relative value I see coming up next. Yeah, I, I would say of the guys at 65 to 1, um, AJ Dillon is the most interesting. DeAndre oh, Swift, I just don't see again. Th they either. have they have four running backs they like. Um, Actually, you know what? Mark down AJ Dillon for me. Really? Okay. Yeah, I'll. I'll uh, Should I'll I say why this is crazy at sixty-five to one, or just let you enjoy? No, your I just explain that this is a if Aaron Jones gets hurt. <laughs> yeah, and he's certainly then old. There he's is up a there. path. There's they one are a run first team, and it's it's June sixth, so we have time. Obviously, I'm heavily overweight on Aaron Jones and best ball, so I'm hoping he doesn't get hurt. But I don't hate this small sprinkle. All right, next up, sixty to one, David Montgomery, Brian Robinson, Jr. Montgomery obviously has the Gibbs competition, but like that team strikes me as the team that could like if they're really good and they're running the ball a lot in the second half. Could he rack up enough counting stats to, for the sixty to one to be decent? Probably not. Yeah, he's just it, it's tough because he's you already have four years of David Montgomery and two forty seven's the highest he's yeah. gotten carries yeah, wise. It's good it, call. Yeah, I, I just don't see him holding up. He's had injury issues as well. It's interesting, but I'm not even at sixty to one. Brian quite. Robinson, sixty to one as well. He, I mean. Ron Rivera. He's yeah, good. we I, all know he's docked the riverboat. He's well, he's not nowhere near that riverboat gambling. So here's, here's the case for Brian Robinson. All right. He, he didn't get shot this year. He didn't yet. get shot this year yet. He did have 205 carries in his rookie year um, for 800 yards. So not great yards per attempt, only 3.9, but could you project him getting to 300 carries? Could, could Brian Robinson jr. Get to 300 carries. I, I actually kind of think there is a path for him to uh, yeah market. get to three hundred. I I'm gonna yeah I'm with you because they seem pretty out on Antonio Gibson. If he's a hundred percent healthy, Chris Rodriguez Jr. would be my concern. <laughs> it's OTA season. Let me have it. Yeah, I think you're right, and I think there's also the version of this where they drafted him to be a bell cow. He's the typical big bell cow type, and he just got shot last year and he came back super yeah, quick. Yeah, I mean guys. he. he Let's let's be real. Let's let's just look at it this way. Did not get shot this offseason. <laughs> Huge upgrade. It's right. funny he got shot and he is not anywhere close 
to being uh, come back later. Come year. back because he already of the came year. back. He came back last but year. But imagine this: he got shot and he still had 205 attempts. Like him getting to 300 is very plausible. Uh, he, yeah, I mean, for him to feel and if you can get to 300, I think you're in the mix, especially at 60 to one. Impressive to see how quickly he felt Zion enough to get back on the field. Imagine if I mean. It, if John Morant got shot in the leg, <laughs> Demar Hamlin is at practice. So already, <laughs> Demar Hamlin is beating out you, Zion Williamson. Yeah, Demar's feeling more like Zion than Zion. All right, next up, fifty to one guys. We got Jalen Hurts, Anthony Richardson, Austin Eckler. Couple things to note here. I I don't think like Eckler's been pretty open about the fact that he's not interested in being a bell cow back. So no. I wonder if he'll have an, and he's a passing game threat. So I kind of feel he gets crossed off immediately. Total yards. I think he's in game. Like, yeah. like all easy. As far as the quarterbacks, obviously I would be, I would pretty disrespectful for Jalen hurts to be side by side <laughs> here with Anthony, Anthony Richardson. I don't, I know you're very confident and now people are starting to slide into my, my uh, responses and DMS telling me I need to back off this Anthony Richardson thing. It's going to look bad when he, he might be good. He's not going to be good this year. And I don't think he's going to start week one. I really don't. And and so I, I would, I would bet insane. that he's going to start week one. That being said, this is an insane price. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, we we laid out the case. Quarterbacks don't win this, so we can. He's just not getting more rushing yards than Austin Eckler, Brian Robinson, <laughs> David Montgomery. Like none. No, of these I don't guys. think he's getting more than Jalen Hurts. Well, definitely I, I mean, not that's... more than Jalen Hurts, but they have the same odds, Sean. Yeah. Buy or sell. No. All right. Next up, we got Javante Williams, forty to one. This is insane. Everything we've heard. Yeah. Uh, both through like the the media, through some speaks of people I know in Colorado. It does. It does not. It's the same thing they're doing with Trey Lance. It's that or Brock Purdy. I'm sorry, where they the front office is doing that thing where they're like, "Oh yeah, it's great. Oh yeah." It does remind me a little bit when I was duped by J.K. Dobbins last year. <laughs> Hell but wow, it, but it's finally that, coming but, clean. Well, Ian Rappaport's still a scumbag. Javante Williams, though, to me, I, this this price doesn't make any sense. I don't I don't get this price. You're out, I assume. Lamar Jackson, thirty five. I mean, again, there's there's a chance he's back on the field and ready to go week one. But still, like the injury just scares He's me. He's not off. sniffing this. All right, thirty-five to one, Lamar Jackson. No, boring. No, come on. A thirty to one, Isaiah Pacheco. Nope. James Conner, Damian Pierce, Najee Harris. Ooh. So not like, like I agree with you. I think Isaiah Pacheco. That that's tricky. Uh, it's Patrick Mahomes. I doubt that. Now, granted. It was Alex Smith when Kareem Hunt won the rushing title with only 1,300 yards back in 2007. I don't think Patrick Mahomes will ever have the rushing leader on his team. James Conner, Damian Pierce, Najee Harris, and I'm sorry, I missed J.K. Dobbins. All 30 to one. All intriguing to me. Yeah. Now we're now we're getting into the meat of it. James Conner, from the perspective of if this, like, he's already chirping at the media about how he loves to be a dog. <laughs> yeah, I'm a man who overcame cancer, Sean, and and he's going to be on a team that could potentially be starting Colt McCoy and a bunch of five foot seven receivers. Uh, why not hand the ball to James Conner a bunch? So I I get that. The the thing is, James Conner is going into year seven. Mm. So to me, at this price point, a guy who. 973 yards year two was his most. And then after that, he hasn't, he hasn't hit 800 yards. And that's again, he's going into year seven, which is really tough for a running back to stay healthy this entire time. Why would you take that when you have Damian Pierce yeah. sitting right there? Isaiah Pacheco again, chiefs are never going to lead the, the league in rushing. That's just stupid. But Damian Pierce. I mean, if he starts all seventeen games, he might have. He he would have been kind of in the mix. So here. what? Who's what offense yeah, he, are they running? What offense are they going to run down there in Houston? That Shanahanian. Oh yeah, you're right. Zone read. Zone offense. read. You have a rookie quarterback. Uh, I'll get to it. Play action is going to be important. And, and Damian Pierce is just a dog. He passes the eye test. Market in thirteen games as a rookie, he had two hundred and twenty attempts for nine hundred thirty nine yards. This is my. Yeah, I, I mean, go. again, this is my my favorite play. Yeah, love it. I, I mean, I like this. At, uh, you could talk me into this at like fifteen to one. I think this is a this is a egregious. Why are you giving up mistake. value? Why why are you giving up CLV, Sean? I should I should have shopped these around. Um, although thirty seems pretty consistent for Damian Pierce. 
Uh, J.K. Dobbins, Najee Harris. I would say cross off J.K. Dobbins. It sounds like Gus is going to be around, and I just think in general it's going to be tough for that running back to lead the league in rushing. But can we talk about Najee Harris? I love Jalen Warren, but sure. Najee Harris is is a prototype guy that could. I mean, if he can stay healthy, all these guys are kind of the same. Like if they can stay healthy. But to Damian your point, Pierce Damian isn't... Pierce is the young guy who has shown that he's been yeah. mostly healthy. Well, and and a little bit banged up. Najee year, Harris. Right? Hmm. Najee Harris, maybe I should put a sprinkle on, but I, I mean, I like Damian Pierce so much more at the same price point. Here's the tiebreaker. Look at the schedule. It's AFC South schedule versus an AFC North schedule. Who, That's do, you, true. who are you taking? But, but I mean, we have Najee Harris had 300 carries as a rookie. Yep. He had 272 last year, even dealing with that foot injury. So the, the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to pound the rock. Yeah, we're Steelers fans. Let's go. All right. Then I feel like. All right, uh, we'll gonna, figure out how we distribute our units at the end of the show. Because I, I might. Maybe you're gonna cross someone off. I yeah, feel I'm like gonna, I, I'm gonna. Hmm, Brian Robinson at six. Cross him off. Let's get. I'm rid gonna of get him. rid. I'm gonna yeah, cut Brian Robinson. I just don't let's think he has him. the athletic profile. I think it's close though. Sixty to one. If you want yeah. to do something silly. All right. Uh, next up, twenty-five to one guys. Etn, Aker, Cam Akers, which is crazy. Aaron Jones, Kenneth Walker. Look, Ken Ken Walker, K9, I, it's tough because they just Charbonnet's the dog. Yeah. Watch Charbonnet a, a, a number of times in person. He's going to be a solid running back. I think P Carroll clearly wants to have a one-two punch. So I think you got to cross cross him off. Aaron Jones for the same reason I told you I liked AJ Dillon. I just I'd rather take the stab at Dillon at 65. Yeah, Aaron Jones maybe like passing yards or a dark horse for total yards, but uh, leading rusher at 25 to one like that just doesn't match the price. Yeah, and and then so then you have uh, so we've crossed off Aaron Jones, we've crossed off uh, Ken Walker, and then you have ETN. Yeah, Ken Ken Walker, I'm with you. He he fits the profile. I I like him, but I like Ken Walker. But I I think the fact that they drafted Charbonnet, he's just not going to get to 300 carries. I think it'd be very unlikely that he gets the gets the carry. So then you have ETN, who ca- kind of uh, interesting, fun guy, but they drafted Tank Tank Biz- Bigsby, I believe, to take some of the load off of his uh, of ETN's chest. Uh, and also, Sean, they you know who else they signed? One of our favorite guys, Dearness Johnson, forever backing up Ooh. Nick Chubb there, yeah, and Kareem Hunt in Cleveland. Yeah, so I guess for me, ETN's out. The guy who's interesting, and we're back to this Cam Akers conversation. If he's the guy in that offense, yeah, I don't think he is. Do, do we know that? Uh, yeah. I mean, they tried to trade him last year. I get it. I I get. Look what he did down the stretch. Pull no, up his game log. No, no, no. He's um he's I'm very pulling. interesting. I'll, I'll I mean, the case for him is he played, of, played in fifteen games, got one hundred eighty carries. Only started nine games, got one eighty eight. I think. Yeah, I don't know. I I think the uh, the offense is going to rely on short, quick passing. Uh, I think you ready? I for think this? they like Kyron Williams. I I just don't think he's. And I think there's a chance they trade him. Like I, I don't know. I'm Last just, three games: twenty three carries, one hundred eighteen yards; nineteen carries, one hundred twenty three yards; twenty one carries, one hundred four yards. Yeah, no. I mean, you're making a good case for him. I'm just, I'm not in on. Cam There's Akers. not many guys we've discussed that are. He's more- interesting for best ball, but 25 to one. I don't know. I'd, I'd just rather have Najee and Damian Pierce at 30. To it's one. a, it's a positive scheme. I, I mean, we might come back to this one because Cam Akers, and honestly, this price compared to where he's being drafted in the best ball streets right now is is quite interesting. Yeah. All right, next up, by himself, Christian McCaffrey, Caffrey, 22 to one. I, this is uh, as much as people think we're 49er haters. Like this is a strange, strange price, Sean. Very strange. Yeah. I mean, he, you, you laid out a great case as to why he could be the offensive player of the year, offense player of the year, even like super dark horse MVP. This, I'm confused as to why all the, like, why are these other guys ahead of him? It, we don't know the quarterback's going to be. Yeah, they, they could be running the ball a fuck. I know there's Elijah Mitchell and Jordan I, I Mason. Guess the, and I guess the only thing like kind of against it is one his injury history. I haven't released whether or not oh, yeah, he well, will get injured this year. The Tradition, world, and like unlike any other, the world's re- waiting. He has had a year where he had 287 carries. 
Call it a release show. I guess. I guess. (laughs) Christian McCaffrey injury. My issues for McCaffrey getting here is. Uh, year seven. That's Eight? a that's a lot of carries to get up to three hundred, right? How uh, many did he have last year? Two forty four between mm-hmm. the Panthers and the Forty ers Yeah, I mean, some of that was, uh, you know, you'd have I'd have to like walk through his entire game log. I I think the problem is he's really good in the passing game, and if you have Sam Darnold stuff, you know, even Brock Purdy, like they're just gonna. They're going to get him involved so much in the passing game. I think that eats into your rushing touches. It just does. Like, you know, he had 85 catches last year and 244. Da- down the, I mean, yeah, he definitely, he had only one game going north of 20 carries. So perhaps, perhaps that's the answer to the question. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to stay away. All right, next up, 20 to 1. Uh, Justin Fields, Joe Mixon, Miles Sanders. Justin Fields is crazy. Just obviously cross that shit off. Joe Mixon, what the fuck are we doing here? Not only have I read glowing reviews of Chase Brown mm. up there and what the coaching staff loves about him. They they seem like they're going out of their way to throw shade at Mixon, <laughs> although they're saying publicly everything's cool. Uh although I do think he's a value in best ball and then Miles Sanders at 20 to 1 is is that's love Miles. Would Sanders. love to have a better offensive situation overall for me to have confidence that they're going to be able to run the ball enough for him to have a shot. So here's here's what I would say to that, Ryan. Um, my Frank Reich was the head coach in 2018 when Jonathan Taylor won it. Uh, the Panthers have 288 vacated running back touches. They also paid Miles Sanders a shit ton of money. He has limited competition in Chuba Hubbard. Uh, Frank Reich brought him in. He's clearly Frank Reich's guy. And to your point, did anyone think that Carson Wentz led offense of the Indianapolis Colts in 2018 was anything special passing wise? Can Bryce Young do what Carson Wentz did in that year in Indianapolis? Maybe they play in the AFC South. You don't have uh, like stout run defenses you're going to be going up against. It's I true. love it's the this. same thing we I said about it. Pierce. Yeah, no, I, li- I like Damian Pierce. I like Miles Sanders. I think that's a what year did they win the rushing title? Jonathan Taylor won it in 2018. That was Andrew Luck. Um, I'm yeah. sorry, 2021 he won it. I don't know why I said 2018. 2021, Jonathan Taylor won it. Frank Reich was the head coach. And um, yeah, it just shows he's he's willing to give a running back. Th- I mean, he gave Jonathan Taylor 332 carries. Slightly now, different level of prospect, probably. Okay. That's fair, but I think they clearly brought him in. He's only had slightly different caliber of offensive line as well. Like that Colts team was 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 I mean, part of the reason they were able to have the turnstile of old ass quarterbacks is that offensive line held up. Or at least wasn't horrible. I mean, I hear the argument. I don't think like to me, Damian Pierce more appealing than than Miles Sanders. My Damian Pierce thirty to one better than Miles Sanders at twenty to one by a mile. Yeah, I mean, I, thoughts. Uh, the fact that you're, I like them both. I still like Sanders at twenty to one, but I, I mean, Damian Pierce at thirty to one. If if I could only place one bet on this market, it would be that one. Yeah, I mean, and this this is a uh, just looking at the game log from that year. Even in in losses, he was having. I mean, he basically had a minimum of fifteen carries. He had a couple thirty carry games. Maybe, may I? I no, I mean, good also, argument, I don't, bad price. I don't think that former Eagle. I get it. I don't think he. Again, I don't think Miles Sanders is getting eighteen hundred yards. I think if he wins it, this would be like a fourteen hundred. Outli- okay, outlier year. I mean, eighteen hundred is is a bit of an outlier for this system. You know, once I mean, an Eagle, always an Eagle. That's what they say. No, I mean, it's really just about money, not comp. He has no competition. Oh, wow. They're going to want to run the ball a ton. Yeah, I, I like it. Uh, all right. Next up, eighteen to one. Ramondre Stevenson, Brees Hall. Brees Hall, very interesting. People very high on him. Don't fully know if he's going to be back. Full go to start the season. Like I'm not as confident as other people are. I think Brees Hall is more interesting as a fantasy prospect because of touchdowns and the offense being good than anything else. To me, Ramondre Stevenson at eighteen to one, very interesting. This could be a team that runs a lot, runs the ball a lot. Ramondre could be a huge, huge asset. But again, I like him mostly because of what he can do in the passing game. So yeah, 
I don't think either of these guys pop out pop off. No, Brees me. Hall, the injury to me is still a concern. Like it just is. I mean, he he was good last year because of his insane explosiveness. So if I'm gonna take a shot on him, I'm I'm gonna need more than eighteen to one. And um yeah, Ramondre, I'm with you. I think he's he's good in fantasy. He's interesting, but when, when did Brees Hall tear his ACL? I'm gonna look that up. I mean, October twenty third, which means you know n- maybe he's ready to come back and play. I I just we we now I feel pretty confident saying when you're coming back from these injuries, like you can come back, but you're not. Not everyone's Adrian Peterson. Yeah, like you're not. <laughs> most of these guys aren't ready. I mean, even even Barkley was much better uh, the full year after the the recovery year. So yeah, yeah I, I think I think he'll be good, but I don't think he's leading the league. It's just such a. All right, just, next up, Bar, uh, Tony Pollard, sixteen to one. He's a cowboy. He is going to have an amazing opportunity to potentially do this with uh, their their new commitment to the run, but hard pass for me. Yeah, I mean, one, he's a cowboy. Two, he. When did he get injured? It was in the playoffs, right? It was I, the last game in the season. I don't really know what they're what they're up to there in Dallas. I I I, I see why people would be excited about. Tony Pollard, if it wasn't for, <laughs> yeah, Tony Pollard. If it wasn't for the fact that he was a cowboy. Yeah, I'm looking at a, a report here from April of SI.com. Tony Pollard Cowboys injuries are, quote, career threatening. Oh. <laughs> He'll be fine. Well, this is this is them saying Skip Bayless's outrageous report, but um, what I'm getting at is like, come come on, at this reduced price. Yeah. If Tony Pollard was like forty to one, yeah, that's a great conversation to have. But at sixteen to one, man, I just don't see it. Barkley fourteen to one. Sat out a game and had two hundred ninety five carries last year. Barkley. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know. I I have to imagine uh he's they're, they're, he's he's in the mix if he decides to I mean he's never played 17 games. Oh, he sat out a game last year. Yeah. Otherwise, so he would have played rare 17 healthy games. season for him. I w- I my argument would be I think part of like the Kumbaya is going to be and part of the reason they drafted Well, do we know what team he's going to be on? Oh, stop it. Part of the reason they drafted this kid out of Oklahoma is that I think I, I think there's a world where he's not getting 25, 30 carries a game because he obviously wore down a little bit last year. I think I would rather take Christian McCaffrey at 22 to one. Yeah. Then, then Barkley at 14. I, th- I do think they're, I mean, he, they are going to run the ball. Um, they are going to be run first team. So that I pass. I, wow. I, I, well, I, I don't think I'm going to take any of these guys if I'm being honest. Like the chalky if, stuff like, is less interesting. Like someone, if someone wants to not be a coward, give me Tyler Algier at 200 to one. That's what <laughs> I want. All right, next up, Bijan 12 to one. I love how you're you're out on um, Bijan Robinson. I'm not out on. Him. Oh, okay, I'm out on him at 12 to one. Yeah, but I'm just saying you're you're anti Kyle Pitts, correct? I'm not anti Kyle Pitts. Oh, okay, I I am. You just have some uh, not positive takes on Atlanta Falcons players. I think considering Kyle, how much you love I, the team. Well, here's my. Th- I'll, let me clear that up for you. I think Bijan Robinson's going to be a dynamic fantasy player. Okay. And I think he he's not going to be a bell cow back based on hearing yeah. some interviews with uh, with Arthur Smith. They still have Cordero Patterson, right? And he's the top and ten Tyler NFL player. Algier. So I I don't think he's going to get enough carries. I do think Kyle Pitts, when he was being referred to as a gold jacket player coming out of Florida, was comical, <laughs> and he hasn't lived up to to the billing. Mostly, we we think because the quarter. If you listen to the fantasy community, it's because the quarterbacks have been shitty. So maybe Ritter can do a better job. Love Drake London, as you know, Sean. We cashed a big ticket with him last year. Anyway, Bijan at twelve to one, silly. No, no, thank come you. on. Josh Jacobs eleven to one, Derrick Henry nine to one, Chubb and Jonathan Taylor both plus seven fifty. Taylor and Chubb, like I get why they're the favorites. Yeah. I'm not taking either of them as the favorites. No, I mean I I Nick Chubb in that situation, no Kareem Hunt it looks like, no Dearness Johnson, it's setting up for a massive year, and I'm I'm trying to get more shares of him 
in uh, underdog best ball again. It's half point PPR, so it makes sense to load up on your chub. I just can't take any of these short prices. The, the under ten to one, you really kind of have uh, to get a lot right here. Of the four, of the four that I just mentioned, so yeah. Jacobs eleven to one, Henry nine to one, Chubb and Taylor seven fifty. Well, Jacobs, you got to pick one. So I would say Jacobs is tough. Again, I like the situation. They still haven't worked out their deal with him. I don't know if that's going to make a big difference, but franchise tag guys are tough because that could be part of the part of the deal is like, well, we're not going to run you into the ground. Yeah. I, and it's really overall, it's kind of tough to win it back to back years. I know, I know Derek Henry did do it, but, and then you got to go all the way back to, you know, LaDainian Tomlinson. Uh, Edron James back in 99, 2000. I mean, obviously Barry Sanders, uh, Emmett Smith won it like four years in a row or three years in a row. That's insane. I just think it's tough to run it back to back in this modern NFL. And to me, Jacobs isn't the same physical specimen as Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry. To me, if I had to take one of these guys, I would take Derrick Henry at nine to one, but you know, man, both Bama running backs. Uh, Derrick Henry again. He is he is eclipsed that sweet spot of year four, year five. He did have 349 carries last year. I just think year seven at nine to one, I'm out. So rapid fire, Jacobs. To me, the I'm I'm worried about the offense, and I'm worried about them falling behind in like they're in the AFC West. That that's a concern to me. Derrick Henry, I, I circle Derrick Henry and Nick Chubb. To me, Taylor and and Jacobs are out because of the offenses they're going to play for. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, Chubb, you know, give me Chubb. That that's the answer to the question. Yeah, I think. I, are you going to put him down as a play? Sure, but I mean, look, what what are we going to do here? I'm I'm probably going to have just as much money on the longer shots because that's that's more interesting to me. Yeah, I mean, my so my my plays here for most rushing leaders are Miles Sanders twenty to one. Najee Harris thirty to one, Damian Pierce thirty to one, and then long shot James Cook one hundred to one. Kramer? All right. So uh, AJ Dillon sixty five to one. Damian Pierce and Najee just like you at thirty to one. And then give me Nick Chubb. I do think it's gonna be hard for Nick Chubb not to get it. Damian Pierce, dare I say lock. I mean if you're looking for an edge boost double down play of the day, sports game on podcast dot com slash edge at thirty to one. Imagine instead of having a hundred dollars on it, you could get two hundred dollars on the um on Damian Pierce at a hundred to one. That to me is uh Let's go, baby. Yeah, and I and I do think the long shots in the rushing market see just at, at least uh, like aesthetically they feel more attainable than the than the receiving side. Easy uh, trying to bust my balls by saying no, Kenny Gainwell, Sean. I'm sure you could get them to write it in for you. Were there any guys we didn't mention that you think were would be worth throwing out there? Because a lot of teams had two guys, which I thought was in, to me. If, if I, like Tyler Algier would be the guy, yeah. like he's. Trust me when I say this. I'd be shocked if he doesn't have 200 carries. I think Bijan's going to be used a ton in the passing game. Anyone else though? Like what? What? No one from New Orleans. Like what about like Miller, Kendry Miller, or something like Rookie, that? Yeah. yeah, like that is, or or even, um, yeah, even Jamal Williams, right? Like I, I, I wouldn't love it, but I mean, if you're talking like past 180 to one, I'm not seeing Rashad white anywhere. Like give me Kareem hunt, Leonard Fournette, long e- shots easy saying Kenny Gainwell. I actually, no. if I had to pick one Philadelphia Eagle Penny. to lead the league in rushing, I would go Rashad penny. Yeah. And if you get me 500 to one or more, you could talk me into it. Cause our gals that, 100, I, 100 that, to one. I'll that, take that. That formula for Rashad Penny is fairly easy, right? Good offensive line. DeAndre Swift gets banged up. Maybe they run Hurts a little bit less as far as total attempts, it's, and he stays oh, healthy. So it's like it's, it's very essentially easy. like a five-team parlay. But again, he, Gainwell, I don't think is ever going to get those kind of attempts. Nope. Uh, same with Boston Scott. Well, he's just for the Giants games. Yeah. Uh, they they asked Boston Scott if the Giants because he was a free agent and they asked did the Giants try and sign him and he said he, he wasn't able to disclose that. Oh, that's <laughs> I love that. That means he likes Brian Dable. <clears throat> All right, you want to talk receiving? It's an interesting take on that. <laughs> yeah, Brian Dable's well liked. Yeah, let's talk uh, receiving. Of course, the history. Uh, it, obviously, much like uh, rushing, it's cor- correlated to catches. Um, it, past leaders Jefferson. 128 catches, uh, 
also led receiving yardage cup had 145 catches in 2021, obviously led in yards. Uh, Diggs, 127 leader, also led in yardage. Thomas, Michael Thomas, 149 catches. My God. Bullshit. Drew Brees off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he also led in rushing yards because even, even though it was like, yeah, receiving, even though it was short yardage stuff, if you get 149 catches, a uh, couple guys that didn't lead uh, the league in catches, but did in yardage, uh, Julio Jones and then uh, Antonio Brown. So those, those guys. Not catch leaders, but did lead in yards. And the year before, T.Y. Hilton led the league in receiving with fourteen hundred forty-eight yards, with only ninety-one catches, thanks to Andrew Luck. That's Those crazy. teams were fucking electric. I know. Everyone, why are you so into? Uh, why are you so into uh, Andrew Luck? Man, he was a fun guy, and he, I, I think he went down as like an all-timer at quarterback ATS. And another like sub hundred yard or hundred catch year that won the receiving title with a decent total, sixteen hundred forty-six yards. The year was 2013. Mm. This man played for the Cleveland Browns and only had 87 catches. Who was it, Sean? Josh Gordon. Yeah, yeah. Didn't lead the league, but he was close. But I mean, no, he led the league in yards. Wait, what year? 2013. 2013. Just yes, had only had right. 87 yep. catches, which is just an insane 19 yards a catch. Woo! It's smoking my weed. YouTube chats fired up. Drastic uh, changes points points out. Dalvin Cook. Could be fun if he ends up going to Miami. He's oh, kind yeah. of an interesting long shot there. That's a that's the answer to the question. Yeah, no, certainly. I, I'm surprised they don't have a price on him. That that's a fun prop. Cook brothers. Mm. Get both cooks. All right, I like that. You're cooking. It's Brian deep. Reese in the YouTube chat saying he got a best ball team with all three Philly running backs. Oh my! God. I hope Sean is proud. Yes, I am. Great, you great see drafting. what you're doing. You're teaching people <laughs> to go real, real negative EV. All right. A uh, couple other notes. No rookies uh, have done it, at least from no. like modern uh, and no tight ends. So never has a running back ever done it. Mm, no, I, I mean, again, I didn't go back through everyone, but just like recent me- memory and like recent scrolling through it was uh, yeah, I mean, correct. Right. Cr- cr- like scroll through and see if anyone's jumping off the board. Your boy, no, I mean, I'm, I'm back to 1950 when t- uh, Tom fears one. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I just don't think it, I, I mean, realistically, you know, Kelsey was always fun in your head. Like if he was ever going to do it, it would have been last year when they got rid of to, Tyree kill. Right. But the fact yeah. that he didn't, he still had a really good year and didn't get it there. Just don't, don't get cute and don't take it. When they tell you old football was about running the rock, don't let them lie. 1961, Charlie Hennigan for the AFL, uh, Houston Texans. I know the Houston uh, Oilers, 1746 receiving yards. Sean, mm. that's in 1961. Triple option was happening everywhere. All right, <laughs> uh, 150 to one. Zay Flowers, George Kittle. Tie, we got a tight end and a rookie. Goodbye. Wait, Zay Flowers isn't a rookie. Oh wait, you're yeah. right. Who well, am I thinking? thinking of? Zay Jones. Zay you're Jones. thinking of the guy who got naked and bloody in that <laughs> hotel room. He used to play for the Bills. ECU guy. Yeah, Colby loves him. Odell Beckham, one thirty to one. <laughs> Did someone say Odell? All right, all right. Walk us through how no, Odell I'm gets not it. in. Well, okay. the way he gets it is you saw what Todd Munkin t- can do with a quarterback that might not have in the entire skill set, AKA Stetson Bennett. I think Lamar is better than Stetson. I do think they're going to commit to pass the ball. And it does seem like Rashad Bateman might be in the doghouse for calling, calling out the GM. Mm. So yeah, obviously the Odell case is that Odell comes back. He's himself and it looks great, but the problem is he's old and he's coming off a serious injury. And I, I don't think he's going to, uh, you know, none of these guys are going to hog it. So yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. I mean, you got to go back to 2019 where you had a uh, thousand yards. There was n- uh, oh, of my entire life it, on record. I would say that one of the most exciting thing in s- sports that I watched on the regular was Odell catching slants from Eli Manning. No, and his taking first, it to his first three years. He was, he, he was just can't do that anymore. Yeah. They, but that that skill he had, I not many guys I've ever seen have that. No, he's an interesting number two, and and I think he's a guy I'm going to maybe play in DFS in certain spots. Ooh, he's a fun stack, definitely. Uh, Quentin Johnston, no. Christian McCaffrey, no thank you. Running back, you can't. Yeah, I mean Christian McCaffrey. I guess you could say if there ever was a running back, it would be maybe this year in a no running back's going to average 15 yards a catch. Like that's that's the real secret. You yeah, look you're right. At. Yards per attempt. 
Yeah, because even in his um, best years, yards per attempt, McCaffrey only got up to nine point three. He did have over a, a thousand receiving yards in twenty nineteen, so that's kind of crazy there. But even a thousand receiving yards off one hundred sixteen catches, nowhere close to leading the league. Since nineteen ninety, the lowest average has been Michael Thomas at eleven point six. After that, it but was, that was yeah, that was off his one hundred forty yeah. catches. And after that, it was Marvin Harrison at twelve. I'd say like the typical average. Should I break the gun out again from oh, Marvin? Harrison? Whoa, whoa, no, dude. We don't need him randomly <laughs> don't showing up. Google to the office. Marvin Harrison gun. Don't, Whatever yeah, you no. do, classic gun. Classic. Don't, gun. don't. Definitely don't. Look don't look up, up antique gun, Marvin. Definitely Harrison. has nothing to do with his son, Marvin Harrison Jr. in Ohio State. Could be the best prospect ever. That no, no. The, the media is definitely not calling him the best prospect ever because of uh, Marvin Harrison and his classic gun. <laughs> don't Google that either. All right, Deont- uh, Deontay Johnson, uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Cortland Sutton, all eighty-five to one. Sutton could be Michael Thomas. That would be the statement. Sutton is playing in a Sean Payton offense. He potentially could be the guy that uh, maybe it's not Judy, maybe it's Sutton. Jackson Smith and Jigba and Deontay. Deontay Rookie. Johnson can get the volume. Maybe he's interesting, but I think there, there's some chemistry with George Pickens. I, None of these guys are appealing. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I haven't heard that Cortland Sutton, Michael Thomas comparison. What so walk us through this? Well, one. it's it's all right. I mean, just it's a dumb a comparison to. Okay, so let's say you have a quarterback that had a horrible year. Granted, probably not limited in the same way that Drew Brees was limited, but you know, smaller in stature. And you have this big physical kind of possession receiver. Obviously, you can make the comparison to what Michael Thomas was in the Peyton offense in New Orleans. Uh, obviously, Judy projects to be more of the vertical threat. They drafted Marvin Mims, who seems to be a different kind of guy that maybe more of a slot guy than Cortland Sutton. So maybe the they slot. don't. They that don't. Maybe they don't leverage the big slot or, or whatever they were using with Michael Thomas. But that would be the angle. The difference is Denver has a lot of receivers. Yeah, I still got KJ Hamler. Mm. So yeah, I'm out on all these guys. Yeah, I just don't see Russ <laughs> being yeah, involved he's not. in the most uh, receiving yards. Yeah, he's he's not cooking anymore. Uh, Bateman, Pickens, TJ Hawkinson, and Mark Andrews all eighty to one. Andrews cross him off tight end. Uh, same with Hawk. Well, Hawkinson's interesting, but yeah, cross him yeah, off too. He's, not he's got uh, Justin Jefferson. There. We've now talked about three Ravens receivers and two Steelers receivers. Uh, what a world we live in in 2023. <laughs> uh, Pickens is interesting because like he's the first guy we've listed where it's like, well, he's a he's a Steeler and he could be a true alpha. Yeah, and obviously, I think what's interesting actually is mark him, Ryan. Right, because mark you s- both the Steelers for me. Actually, okay. I'm I'm high on Kenny Pickett. I got higher on Kenny Pickett over the weekend. <laughs> Was I, it just Kenny I, Pickett or it's I, about weed. And I plan on getting even higher on Kenny Pickett. You know what? I know a lot of people are seeing the, the lists are circulating out there. I got so offended for Mike Tomlin when I saw him fucking like 27th on that coach's list. Well, are you, you fuck, talk- are you out of your fucking mind? You know, <laughs> stay, get off your Eagles throne for a second. <laughs> we're we're a Mike Tomlin show. You're telling me there's 25 coaches better than Mike Tomlin? Here's here's get the, Ge- the fuck out here's the here. George Pickens case, and it's pretty easy. Right, we see receivers make a jump from year one yeah. to year two. We saw, you know, Kenny Pickett, aka Pickettsburg, close well, like strong. That. And Pickensburg. Yeah, Pickens and Pickensburg. <laughs> uh and Ryan, you, what did you say? Yards per reception has to be over fifteen yards. Oh, he's a big time yards per catch. He had fifteen point four. He had eight hundred yards on fifty two catches. I mean, if you can get this kid up to ninety catches, a hundred catches, a hundred and ten catches. Yeah. At this price point, again, obviously the we also like Najee Harris. They're gonna run the ball a bunch, but at eighty to one, I love George Pickens this year. Yeah, great call. At, I I also think, and we've reminded people, but Kenny Pickett was quite nice down the stretch. So for yes. him to take a step forward, second year quarterback, that would make a lot of sense. And there, and uh, you know, we talk about the. The AFC North is kind of if we expect Lamar and the Ravens to be pass heavy, Deshaun yeah. Watson not to be as a it's huge a pile point. of shit. Uh, and, and then you're you like maybe some of these games a little higher scoring, a little more oh. pass heavy than previous AFC North battles. I you know. Not your grandfather's within NFC within North. Reason. Right? Isn't that what they say? Yeah. All right. Next up. And I, I was I was dra- I was frantically trying to pull up that coach's list just to I mean 
honestly, can you even name five coaches better than Mike? Mike Tomlin was twenty second on this list behind Josh McDaniel. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. That's that's insane. That's he was crazy. behind Kevin O'Connell. Who's list? Kevin is? Brandon Staley. Uh, looks like a fantasy pros maybe. I don't know. Oh come yeah. on, come on, trash. All right, sixty five to one. We have Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Jordan Addison. Of course, Mike Evans. Going for ten is he is he going for ten or eleven straight thousand yard seasons, which is almost I mean that seems almost impossible. And then you remember he got Johnny Football, aka Johnny <laughs> Manziel, drafted in the first round. That's how dude good he, he was. he's had a crazy career. That's how and fucking good this guy is. He he hovers right around that fifteen yard uh, per yard mark. I just think him and Godwin, uh, they're they're gonna eat into each other's catches, and then obviously. Dropping down from Kyle Trask, or you know, from Brady to Kyle Trask, or Brady to Baker, oh, it's just not lateral happen. move, right? It's just not going to happen. Even at sixty-five one, Addison to me is fun, but he's on a team with T.J. Hawkinson and Justin Jefferson. That that would be the well. They're still going to throw a lot, and Jefferson gets hurt, and he's really good. Uh, to me, you can talk me into the idea that the Bucks are going to be tremendously bad. Uh, Rashad White's on record telling everyone they're going to throw the ball a lot. That's why yeah. he's going to get a lot of, uh, of targets. So I guess you could talk me into just spraying both these guys, and maybe they have one of these seasons where Baker throws for five. No, <laughs> absolutely not. I, that was a joke. I'm sorry if I dragged people along there. Sixty to one. Happy for the ride. Debo Samuel, Michael Pittman Jr., who thankfully wasn't gambling on the Colts. DJ Moore, Christian Kirk, Drake London, and Rashid Shahid. Rashid Shahid is very interesting. If you think if you are high on that passing attack. Well, also Michael Thomas, it sounds like they're kind of optimistic about him. Rashid Shahid, he does fit the yards per reception. He's a, he's like a deep ball guy, 17.4 yards. I just don't ever think, and now you can make the case that he makes a jump from year one to year two, but the fact that Michael Thomas is coming back he healthy, the fact that we haven't gotten any word yet on Alvin Kamara, he might end up playing more. Like, I don't know. I, I'm going to pass on Shahid. I, I guess of those guys at that price point, he's the most interesting to me. Drake London, again, Falcons don't know how to throw the ball. Uh, DJ Moore, no. Debo Samuel, they're they're gonna use him still as bunch as a running back. You're gonna rely on the yak if you're you're going Samuel. Like That's Sa true. The angle with Samuel is is that he gets a, a whole shitload of schemed up stuff, and I just don't know how they support a leading receiver. Michael Pittman Jr. No, is a hard out. <laughs> Well, that's because your hatred of Anthony Richardson, but they have some other nice pieces. I, yeah, I don't think Alec he's ever, Pierce, I think's decent. Like I like just, Michael Pittman Jr. I think we're going to see his best years on a different team. Yeah. I think he could be the guy that someone gets a good value trade on this this upcoming year, maybe, or maybe they let him. I, I don't know if he's got what two years left. Drastic change is pointing out that Shahid's a deep threat. He is. Yeah. He's fun for like first touchdown. I agree with that. Here's the angle. Name me a receiver on this team that not named Michael Thomas or Rashid Shahid. Callaway, I think they probably still, still have. Still there? Yeah, Marcus Callaway. A big, big leap of faith if he's still there. Yeah, I, I'm. I mean, Juwan Johnson. People get excited Tight about, end. but Taysom Hill. Uh, Brian Edwards is there. Uh, Chris Olave. Oh yeah, how do we forget on. about Olave? Yeah, I'm out on that pick. Yeah, Olave's uh, third to one. Yeah, fuck this. Traquan Smith's still there though. That's fun. All right. Next up, forty-five to one batch: Brandon Ayuk, DeAndre Hopkins, Mike Williams, Tyler Lockett, Calvin Ridley, Christian Watson. Obviously, people are high on Trevor Lawrence as an MVP candidate. They're high on him throwing for mm -hmm. a lot of yards. He has a soft schedule, and last we looked, Calvin Ridley was a bona fide number one. Th that yeah, I mean, I think this. I think this Jags team is getting overhyped. I think Calvin Ridley taking a year off and then hopping back it's in the offense. Not good. It's not going to be a smooth transition. Uh, Forty-five to one, though. Mm -hmm. I you almost because by talent, he should be up with the the Garrett Wilsons of the world. The yeah, Stephon Diggs of the, maybe not Stephon Diggs, but similar in that range. I'm to surprised me. he's this to me is one of the more surprising prices. And well, I Trevor, think, Trevor Lawrence did throw for 4,100 yards, so you have the quarterback. We're that buying can probably support it, right? Yeah, we're buying variants. We're we're buying into a situation where it could work. Probably not. I think they're probably not going to 
pass enough, but I, I would mark this one at 45 to one. I'd also mark Mike Williams for the obvious. If Mike Williams stays healthy and Keenan Allen does not like that's, this is a no brainer. Mm. So to me, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take a stab on Mike Williams and Calvin Ridley. I, I wonder if people would be interested in, in Deandre Hopkins stuff at this point. Well, we don't know what team he's on. That's, that's that it, makes it obviously, really but, tough. but where, where does he go where the price gets worse and where does he go? Like to me, it's like we're hearing the news now, right? Like the, some of the elite uh, or mo- more progressive teams, like the Giants, the Chiefs, the Bills, they've all said they're out on DeAndre Hopkins. Did Chiefs said they were they were officially yeah. out. Yeah. Okay, it, it it seems like the Bills don't have the money. I kind of think he ends up in Cleveland. If I had to take a guess right now, and and, and is that is is that a situation where he could lead the league in, ru- in receiving? He's no. year eleven. You know what I mean? He, he'd be a number two to Amari Cooper. Yeah. I'm with, I, I'm going to take Calvin Ridley. Guy loves gambling. Oxygen. So you're out on Mike Williams though. You don't like that. T- another one where isn't the situation like this price does like even the fact that he's so close to Keenan Allen. Next batch, I will get to it now. But Keenan Allen, Jerry Judy, DK Metcalf, and Amari Cooper to go with Devonta Smith. They're all forty to one. To me, Mike Williams again. The Chargers are cursed. He's going into his seventh year in the season. And he's never had 76 catches was his high. Like he's just not a guy who's going to get a hundred catches. Yeah. Like I highlighted, he has to stay healthy in, in some ways. I, maybe we, we take Keenan Allen too. this team's no. going to pass for a lot of yards. No, but I, I just think the chargers offense in particular, there's too many. Actually, you know what? Cross off Mike Williams. I'm going to make a, a, a change in my pick. I know he's a rookie, but give me Quentin Johnston at a hundred to one. Okay. Get that Mike Williams out of here. All right. <laughs> Any of the 40 to one guys, Jerry Judy, Jerry Judy should not. So you're, so you're high on this year. You're high on the chargers Passing and the Falcons. Attack. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Two teams. I love Calvin uh, Ridley though. Um, he only played five games in 2021. Hmm. Again, I think he took time off for being sad. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to get well, back to that, whoa. but last essentially full season in 2020 Atlanta, 143 targets, 90 catches, 1374 receiving yards, 15.3 yards per reception. So I, that's why I think Ridley fits the profile. All right. Jer- uh, Jerry Judy. I don't <laughs> like, I do like dress uh, in the YouTube chat. Drastic change is saying Calvin Ridley literally yeah. bet on himself. How could you not like that? Guy? And now he's wearing a zero. Yeah. So go, go figure. All right. So once again, 40 to one guys, Allen, Judy, DK Metcalf, Amari Cooper. Devonta Smith. The only guy here that is kind of like by himself is Amari Cooper right now. So probably there are people out there that feel like that's a good price for a guy that could have tremendous volume. I guess maybe the Deandre Hopkins news is holding this price up. I'm not really sure why Amari Cooper has longer odds than some of the guys we haven't spoken about yet. Yeah. I mean, I guess for me, it's, it's one, not super high on Deshaun Watson Two, he again, guy who struggles to stay healthy, stay on the field three entering year 10. It's kind of just tough for receivers to, to put up these crazy numbers this late into the season. He had 132 targets last year, only 78 catches. Perhaps yeah. that, that improves. Uh, I'm with you though. I I'm not, I'm below market on Deshaun Watson this year, 30 to one. You have to know when to come. No, I would never want to be below market in that kind of situation, though. Might get a little messy. Chris Olave, T. Higgins, Terry McLaurin, all thirty to one. Yeah, I feel dumb for forgetting that Chris Olave was on the Saints. He's a good. He's an interesting option here. I he, mean, you're in a dome, but it, 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 Michael Thomas on track for training camp. On track for week. I, I don't. This guy just seems like he's perpetually banged up. But I Olave just fits that profile. He got the 14 and a half yards per reception rookie year with dog shit quarterback, 72 catches, a hundred thousand, 42 yards at 30 to one. I'm in on Chris Olave. I'm not, I don't think they're going to pass enough. No, I get that. But they, I mean, they, I threw, like the pick though. I, they I, threw it to him 72 times last year and he yeah. only started nine games. Let's say he gets a full 17 starts. Agree. And, and could you make a case? Derek Carr is slightly better than what they had. Obviously we like Jameis. Uh, Winston, but is he better than Andy Dalton? Yeah, sure. And and I still think there's some issues on the Saints' defense. They play in a in a weird division as well. Are do 
Is, is this at all I related? I really like the Alave. Is this related to the fact that Gruden stopped by uh, the Saints facility to help out with uh, <laughs> Derek Carr? I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Yeah, I I I would actually. You know, I'm a, a Terry McLaurin guy. I do think if that offense hits, he could have a nice year. I don't think he's going to get enough. But T. Higgins, like, what are we doing here? Jamar Chase is 750. If Jamar Chase d- disappears from that attack, there's no reason why T. Higgins isn't going to be in the mix. Yeah, I I just like Olave. I I love the second year receiver, especially like Olave. He t- he to me T. is T. like Higgins a better a, version of Pickens. Where T. Higgins is a contract year. Yeah, no, I get yeah, it. You know what, Mark T. Higgins. I got a lot of guys marked. I get it. I just already have a guy at thirty to one. I like a little better. Travis Kelsey twenty five to one. Amal Ross St. Brown Damn. and C. D. Lamb all twenty five to one. I <clears throat> another cowboy that you could probably make reasonable arguments for. I just think he's soft. Yeah, I mean I'm on Ross St. Brown. <sighs> That that's pretty appetizing. Jared Goff. Jared Especially Goff. Jared Goff. With, yeah, but Jared Goff gets you garbage yards. And I still don't think this Detroit Lions team has fixed their has fixed their defense. You saw how he was seventh last year, 106 catches, eleven hundred and six well, actually that's sorry, that's catches. He was Eleventh last year in yards. Yeah, I guess I guess the case against him is how does he do better than last year, right? I mean, 106 catches, 1161, still eleventh place. His yeah. yards per reception did go up from 10.1 his rookie year to 11, sophomore year. I'm gonna hold off on this, but I I he's clearly the guy for me. I again, Kelsey's just not gonna win this thing. Uh, CD Lamb, no, thank you. Kelsey last year eighth place and C D Lamb thirteen or sixth place. But we, as we know, they're gonna they're going down. They're gonna be a run. They've team. gone out of their way to say they're gonna be a more run heavy team, uh-huh. which I guess is why you're hyped up on Tony Pollard. But the yeah. injury concerns I think are legit. Next up, you got Jalen Waddell at twenty. T- so you could make the argument that Jalen Waddle, both Jalen Waddle, Garrett Wilson, twenty to one. Jalen Waddle is interesting in the same way that T Higgins is interesting, but you're getting. A worse price. Jalen Waddell finished in the top ten last year. Uh, to me, Garrett Wilson's interesting just because, like, we know what Aaron Rodgers has done with number ones, right? Yeah. I mean, Devonte Adams, uh, second place behind that historic. So if Cooper Cup doesn't have that historic season, Devonte Adams, yeah, I mean, wins that in twenty twenty one. Devonte Adams, yeah, twenty twenty. Um, Diggs beats him by a couple hundred yards, but he finishes second with Aaron Rodgers. Again, Aaron Rodgers tends to lock into those ones, but you got to wonder: Alan Lazard there, Randall Cobb there. Is he going to be? He's already got kind distracted. of his guys, and there there just feels like something about that Jets aura that is horribly, horribly wrong. Jalen Waddle again. It's like, man, if it was thirty to one, if it was yeah. a little bit higher, thirty to one, I, could I talk would take myself it just like into it, but twenty to one. I don't want him to be the second receiver at 21. Like the math is just tough. Garrett Wilson, I think you have to mark. I'm I'm gonna have to refine my list, but you can mark him. Don't you have to mark him? No. I mean, Garrett Wilson. Just because you're out on this is purely like I'm out on Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Okay. And I don't think Devontae Adams is. Yeah, Devontae Adams comparing him to Garrett Wilson. I I like Garrett Wilson. Oh, I I think they're similar. I mean, I think Garrett Wilson's pretty good. Yeah, maybe you're not as high on Gil. I'm I'm pretty and, high. On and Devonte Adams does kind of shit on my age narrative. Although he he did you know he had 1500 yards last year, uh, ninth year in the league, uh, and back to back in his eighth and ninth years. It's usually you don't see that. Again, he was kind of a late bloomer as far as a dominant receiver. Usually they pop a little bit early. Can I blow your mind? Sure. Garrett Wilson finished 15th. 15th. Oh my God. In the NFL in yards last year with fucking Joe Flacco, Zach Wilson, <laughs> Mike White. I, I'm in on this guy. Might have to scratch some of these long shots. Go bigger on Garrett Wilson. All right, Diggs. I, I get the case for him. I, Diggs I, 18 to 1. Uh Adams and AJ Brown 16 ooh. to 1. Uh Diggs, you could argue that like he's the most interesting guy to me because I think at the end of the day, you, when you look at these top notch guys, it's really, it's like that 150 target range. Like, can you get to 150 targets to have enough volume? And I think Diggs has that. 
I think D- Diggs has a quarterback that will lock in on him. I, t- to me, like th- this may maybe I, I'm really starting to figure out my strategy. I like all these guys, <laughs> but t- to me, Diggs and Garrett Wilson in this range, ha- like they they have the ability through volume, and I think they're gonna have they're gonna be clear number ones on their team. Where I don't know if we can say that even about everyone as we go up this list here. So yeah, I, I think the noted exception is AJ Brown, and everyone will say you're oh, going to bet this at sixteen to one. That that's the thing. The price isn't that great, but I'm because he got 145 win. targets last year, but somehow only he converted them into 88 catches, which right, is a so really a, low catch I, percentage. I, here's what I would say: Yeah, if he can be slightly more efficient on that catch percentage, he had. I don't think it was him watching the tape. He's a out, true alpha. I think the quarterback's going to have to be a little bit better. That that would be my take. no, and 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 Jalen Hurts has improved as a passer every year in college football and in the National Football League. Ryan, he was also neck and neck there, um, n- neck and neck uh, there, you know, with the MVP. I mean, Justin Jefferson had forty more catches than AJ Brown, and AJ Brown was only <sighs> what three hundred yards uh, behind him. Like, I, I think the. The formula where AJ Brown is a dominant season, I think, is there. Third, so in the N- little- third in the NFL in yards per target. Yeah. And and maybe they, you know, they're playing the Chiefs, the Bills, like teams that like to throw the ball. Like uh I they're playing a tougher schedule. Usually that means you're going to have to throw a little bit more. Yeah, so. it'll be it'll be curi- it'll be interesting to see if if uh, AJ Brown's yards per reception stays so high. Because it's it's like it's like very, very elite. Um and to he's your elite point, though. To your point, he, the Tennessee Titans. He gets this volume. Uh, who knows? I mean, it's not. Also, it's not. It's not like off the charts historically weird for him. His rookie year, he had twenty yards uh, to, per reception. To me, I mean, the fact that they the Eagles had two two guys in the top ten is yeah, the argument. One uh, guy goes down, and that would be maybe be why I would like to me the, the fact that Devon. You look at an outlier, Devonta Smith at forty to one. He's in the same. Why is he not twenty to one like Waddle? Why is he? You know. So th- t- again, I you know tend to like to take the second guy, but if I was playing an Eagle, it'd be Devonta Smith at forty to one, not AJ Brown. I, I see the one. case. I see yeah. the case. But I would say, you know, Devonta Smith had seven more catches, and you know, I, uh, AJ Brown had a shit ton more receiving. Yeah, yeah but it's like one of them. No, gets no, hurt, I, right? I, it's the variance of if one gets hurt, neither is going to get hurt. Should they be that far apart? Oh, AJ Brown in the PEDs, he should stay healthy. <laughs> Cooper Cup twelve to one, Tyreek Hill nine to one, Jamar Chase seven fifty, and Justin Jefferson six fifty. I mean, these are the guys who are probably going to win it, but at at these prices, are I mean, Cup is two guys had one hundred and eighty targets last year. Justin Jefferson and Devontae Adams. I think Devontae Adams is a wild card for me. Justin Jefferson, he's turning what? Is he twenty three? Maybe turning twenty four. He had one hundred eighty four targets. 184 targets. I don't. Maybe he loses some to Addison. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe he loses some to Hawkinson on the full season. And then you have Tyree Kill at 170 care, uh, targets. After that, uh, only a couple of guys even got above 150. So to me, there is a shelf here. And obviously, Cooper Cup was injured. We know what he uh, is capable. A, a healthy of. Cup is interesting, right? Like he had 191 targets the year before in that yeah. crazy season. Well, and so. he was still on a pretty decent pace in 2022. Like that's the thing. I could see him get in here again with the Rams still being not amazing, especially receiving yards. Like how many do we got? I mean, One, for so ba- basically I'm I'm cup is on cup is close for me, but I'm going to, I'm going to hold off. It's hard to not I know it's Lent, but I mean, Justin, Je- if cup doesn't happen, I mean, Jeff Jefferson's just on a different planet and his defense is probably going to be shitty. Like <laughs> he has the best like, no, game I mean, scenario. You could, I mean, we could sit here and make a really good case that it, even at plus, plus six fifty, it's a decent price. Yeah. Uh, maybe you're right with cup just cause like who else is getting the ball on that team. But yeah, yeah I'm, I'll, 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 I'll stop. I'll, I do. I won't take digs. I'll leave him off. All right. Final answer. You ready for this? Yeah. I mean, AJ Brown is as chalky as I'll go, but it's probably going to be Justin Jefferson. <laughs> um, so my final list, AJ Brown, 16 to one, Chris Olave, 30 to one. 
And the, the more I think about it, like if I had to make a lock, it would be that one. Uh, Calvin Ridley, 45 to one, George Pickens, 80 to one. Kramer, what do you wait? Got? So the gun to your head, like top four Jefferson chase Hill cup at their prices. The answer is Jefferson. Yeah. 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 Cause I, I, I the situation, the you're in a dome again. Yeah, you're not gonna get rich on. He's uh, the number one pick in fantasy. <laughs> yeah, like I just, it's it set up so well. All right, give me Garrett Wilson twenty to one, T Higgins thirty to one, Calvin Ridley forty five to one, and George Pickens at eighty to one. Scratch Deontay Johnson at eighty five <laughs> to one. Ah, oh, poor guys. Quentin Johnson. Right, leave one? Quentin Johnson on there. That's that. No, actually, he's a rookie. Cross him off. Yeah, System come on. Play. That's why we got we got All lists right. here. All right. Only what did I finish with? <laughs> Only four of them. Same amount as you. All right. After all that, people well, making had, fun of me in the chat. You had six, and you cut it down to two. Like a very great um, ideas don't game. start as great ideas, Sean. They start <laughs> as good ideas, and you craft them. Hey, thank you uh, everyone for tuning in. Shout out to the chat. Love you guys. youtubecom slash podcast. Make sure you Smash! that subscribe button. Toss us a nice rating review. Love waking up and seeing the Apple Podcast reviews. Uh, if it's a good one, uh, you might win a little SGPN gift card. That's always fun. Uh, toss us five stars over on Spotify. Turn on auto downloads. That always helps uh, helps grow the brand. Get those auto downloads up. What else do we got here, Ryan? Oh, awesome! Uh, uh, you know, bunch of shows coming up. We got obviously Game Four NBA picks, USFL college baseball episode. We got the Belmont. It's a it's a hell of a network we got here, Ryan. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we're we're I mean, uh, planning way too far in advance. But we got uh, fantasy top ten coming in a couple weeks. Yep, NFL team previews. We got co- we're gonna go deep into college and early. Ju- I mean, it's all happening. It's Football's all happening. here. Training camp two a days. Participating in the sports and, gambling podcast. And just because it's happening all around us all the time, Colby has officially started putting team previews in the can. Oh, look out! If you're if you're if you tuned out because you're not a baseball or basketball guy. Perfect. Time you're gonna want to subscribe. You're gonna want to make sure you got the college football feed turned back on because so, starting Monday morning, uh, what's the first one? Is it Army potentially? Because we love this country. A's are dropping. Starting I think Air Sunday. Force. It's Air Force. No, oh, there you go. We still love this country. Yep. Although Army better than Air Force. No, Air Force rules. I'm an Army guy. What can I say? For the sports game on packets, I'm Sean second the money green, and he is Ryan. Uh, you're welcome for putting all these picks in the comments below. Kramer, let. It ride.